Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? It's SEL0320 representing JVSO. To my great excitement, I've been doing a triple threat um, hat trick of reviews tonight, and I've gone through and did my review for Mission Impossible, Fallout, to which I gave a 10 out of 10. I actually really enjoyed it. One of the better action movies I think I've ever seen. You can definitely check that at the very end of this video. Um, also did a review for Equalizer 2, which I think I gave it between a 7.5 and 8 out of 10. Did enjoy it, thought the first one a little bit better, but even, all in all, it's a really fun movie. Now, let's get down to the brass tacks. When I went to the San Diego Comic Con, I don't know if it was Saturday or it was Friday night, but I was treated to, thank you Gary, appreciate you, um, the ability of not only being able to interview the cast of the Dark, no, man, I almost messed that up. <laughs> Death of Superman, part one, but I was also able to watch the actual film. And I gotta say, like, um, I loved it. <laughs> I cannot wait to own it next week because um, the very first um, DC animated film that really hit home um, as far as this line of series, I mean, of course you got uh, the Massacre of Phantasm. Batman and Massacre of Phantasm one of the best animated films. Best Batman film probably ever ever made. But the death of Superman was one that it was like, wow, this is where we can really go with this. And it sets the tone for everything that's kind of preceded it after that point from the Red Hood, Year One, um, Justice League, Dark, um, Judas Contract. It's, it's been tons of great DC animated films, they've been ruling the market, but this is actually one of those ones that, to me, I'm probably going to go down as a classic. And you got um, back Jerry O'Connell as Superman, you got Rebecca Romaine as Lois Lane, you got Rain Wilson as Lex Luthor, which I thought was interesting. I, I was like, how is he going to pull this off? But he nails it. Um, Rosario Dawson is back as Wonder Woman. And you got Christopher uh, Gorm and uh, what's my man named? Jason Amara. He's back as Batman. Um, Christopher Gorm plays the Flash in this one. I, I, this, still my favorite animated uh, voice actor for Flash is going to be Michael Rosenbaum. But he does a really good job in his role for all these different films. I, I actually really enjoyed it. One of the things that was really scary to me was the fact that it looked like they were really trying to adapt the 1993 graphic novel. I, I, I noticed it, I could tell that they were really trying to go for it. But the thing that worried me when I was looking at the trailers, I was like, how does this work with the 52 version that they've been, you know, unraveling all these things? Like, this is part of the 52 universe. Like, you even grafted it, started it with Justice League War, you know, then you went with Throne of Atlantis, and then you've gone all the way through from this point. But then at the same exact time, I have to remind myself that they did do the Jews contract. This was still part of the same as that characters and voice actors. So I think that they tested the waters with that, and it worked so well that they were like, okay, well, let's see how we can progress this. One of the things that happened early on, especially if you look at Justice League War, is that Superman and Wonder Woman had a relationship. And that does get addressed in this one. I don't want to spoil anything about it. But in this one, more so, Superman is trying to retain and cultivate this relationship with Lois Lane and refine what it means for them to be together. What does this really look like? Because before, you know, Wonder Woman, I mean, not too many people can even hurt Wonder Woman, let alone her not be able to even protect him. So it's like it's really different when you have somebody that's complete, you know, vulnerable. Um, that you really care about and love and it's just interesting to see how that love story progressed through the beginnings of this and the first act I thought it was very organic and, and natural in the way that they actually did the story for it um, Lex Luthor has got this vendetta against Superman very egotistical in his headspace um, but then all of a sudden like something is literally coming out of the sky and you're trying to figure out what the heck is it and the thing is, there's so many different Easter eggs. If you read the graphic novel, the 1993 graphic novel, you're going to be like, yo, I know where that character comes from. Especially there was one in space. Like, there was one when, it, when uh, Darkseid was coming through, um, not Darkseid, Doomsday was coming through space, 
coming through the entry and the atmosphere, I was like, yo, is this really what this is about right now? And then the other thing about it, like, um, the death of Superman, the original one, the original animated one, you know, it definitely showed, like, Doomsday was not going to stop. It killed everything in his, in his, in his path. And I was kind of like, what What are they going to do that's going to make you live up to that? The difference in this one, not only was he going to kill anything in his past, but the Justice League were all in this movie. And it was like, it was like Doomsday was a hammer and they were nails. And he was just whacking them and whacking them, whacking them into the floor to the point that these nails are starting to bend. And I was like, that's the best analogy I can kind of give without spoiling anything because the way that they utilized Doomsday, I was really caught off guard and surprised. I even liked the look of it better. As a matter of fact, the first time I looked at the trailer, I was like, eh, this looks dumb. But the way that they utilized him and the way that you uncover who he is, it was just genius. But there's so many different uh, Superman references and Superman Easter eggs. They're just even two or three different Man of Steel moments, dog. Man of Steel moments that I was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> I don't know if Jay Olivia was a part of it. I don't know, you know, who put that in there, but I was like, that is a direct Man of Steel film moment. And I was like, you you go. I was, I was so cheesed. I was so and thrilled i was so into the action and matter of fact when the action really did come and it was like getting down to the point and i was like yo this is really about to happen right now i was like i don't want this to happen right now you know and you know what the movie is called it's called the death of superman um and it's like man like it's funny because i feel like if Something like this was just made into a live action movie for two and a half hours. Yo, people would legit eat it up, bro. Because the way they do it is they, they do enough to make you care. But then they pay it off with a return. You know what I'm saying? They would give you a return for your deposit. Because um, there's a couple of different characters that they show that really have ties to Superman. Not just Lois. But there's even this one guy that you know works at a fishing shop down down by the pier and he's like i'm superman's buddy i'm superman this jimmy Olsen makes even more of a like a gesture when it comes to clark and superman and it's just like you can tell that superman from um justice league war to right now has evolved and progressed as a hero you know what i'm saying and it's like to watch him really over time progress into this and for his refining moment i was like that was amazingly earned and i loved it drell uh alexander looked at it with me when we were in san diego comic con he does not look at animated features at all and he really wanted to be a part of this review unfortunately he couldn't but he he really enjoyed it as well hopefully um this kind of pushes him to make a review as well but um I'm gonna give it a 10, man. Like, I didn't have any faults in it. And the other thing is that if you stay towards the end, like, you think that the, t the title credits are something else, but really, like, there are certain in between moments that happen, and they're all gonna be for this build up for this part two. This might be as good as um, The Dark Knight Returns part one and part two, if they do it right. And they've already nailed the hardest part to me personally a lot of people know this part but they don't know the back end and how this progresses and matter of fact i don't even know stylistically how they're gonna make superman even look by the end of this so yeah this is actually really intriguing um hopefully y'all enjoyed this review keep it locked jvs we ain't gonna stop make sure you check out the reviews for mission impossible fallout Equalizer 2, and hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Leave a like, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button. Talk to you guys later. Have a blessed one.